What's up guys, it's Brad from JBH Media here, back again with another Blender 3D shot breakdown. Today I'm going to be going over this shot that I used in a sci-fi trailer that I released a few months ago called uh, No End. And uh, I'm just going to be going over this shot from its live action stages all the way to combining the live action with the CGI in Blender. I'll go ahead and show you guys the original shot. As you can see we shot this at a pier on a lake. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to replace the pier and everything below the pier with a building that our actor here is going to be standing on top of and then we're going to replace everything from the pier on with uh, a shot of a city um, so yeah let's uh, let's get started so the first thing I did was track this shot inside of Blender I used the uh, Blender 3D tracker if you don't know what camera tracking is I'll put some tutorials in the description below on it but basically it's where you tell a computer how your camera is moving in a shot so that when you add in CG components those components will actually move and act like they're within your scene so what I did here is that these are all my tracking points uh, you, you typically choose points of contrast and uh, you allow this computer to uh, track it and uh, then solve how your camera is moving after your computer solves what your camera is doing you can take that tra tracking data and put it onto a camera within the computer so that all the CG objects you create will move as if they're in the scene. I think handheld movement is definitely better than adding movement in post-production. It just has a little more a realistic feel, but just keep in mind that you will have to track your shot if that is the case for you. So yeah, that was our first step. We then imported the tracking data from these points onto a camera in, your, in my 3D scene. So from here, as you can see, our tracking markers are in the scene and our camera is actually moving according to the way that our camera was moving while we actually took the live action shot. From here, the next step was to create the CG that was going to be in the scene. The first thing I knew I needed when creating the shot inside of Blender was a background matte painting that could be projected onto geometry in the scene. So what I did is I found this picture off of cgtextures.com of a city and then I cleaned it up for a background plate. I then took that photo and projected it onto an angled plane. As we move through the timeline here, the background city image is actually moving with our camera um, in Z space. As I said before, this technique is called camera projection, and all we're doing is taking a matte painting and putting it on geometry so it moves according to the movement of the camera. The computer isn't actually calculating the lighting for this uh, image here. It's not really technically CGI. It's really just a matte painting. But anyway, so after creating our background plate here, the next step was to create buildings that we could put in the foreground. So I simply created some geometry inside of Blender to project the images of these buildings onto. And uh, as you can see here in Blender, I just have some basic shapes, mainly just used uh, cylinders and cubes to uh, create this geometry. Um, several of the buildings are duplicates. I just created one, projected the uh, image onto it, and then uh, moved them different areas in Z space. Um, so that's our second step in creating our matte painting background and projecting it onto geometry. If you go through the timeline here, you can see that we get some parallax with the background and the buildings. Um, so that looks pretty good. So after creating the background and projecting it onto uh, different, different geometry, uh, I needed to actually create the CG environment of the top of the building that our actor is standing on. So the only part of the roof that I actually modeled was the uh, orange striped edge of the roof here and just the top concrete block. These uh, fans were from BlendSwap.com and also this barbed wire and these pipes were I believe from BlendSwap.com as well. I think uh, when, it com when it comes to uh, making visual effects shots, you can find a lot of assets online that make your life a lot easier so you don't have to create everything yourselves. Uh, just make sure you credit those people uh, when you do use their work. But anyway, yeah, I imported these uh, pipes, uh, the fans, and then this barbed wire uh, to kind of add to some more realism of our shot. And then for materials, of the top of the roof, I just used a concrete texture. For the edge of the roof here, I used kind of this striped texture. And then uh, for these uh, fans, I used a uh, rusty texture with a specular map to make them a little shinier. And then uh, I did the same thing for the pipes. And then for the barbed wire, I used just a basic rust texture. The ship I actually added in later. All it is is a basic diffuse texture of this uh, the same striped material and then a uh, specular map to give it a little metal look. But yeah, this is pretty much the end result to our shot. One more thing I did was I added an environment map of the city just to kind of make sure that the lighting was decent. But other than that, this was pretty much how I rendered the shot. So after creating the roof, I uh, simply rendered the shot out and uh, went on to compositing inside of After Effects. 
So our next step is obviously to composite the live action shot into this CG shot. So the first thing I did was rotoscope the live action shot, so just the actor is in the shot. I then did a little bit of color grading so I could uh, match the image. Um, I used a hue and saturation setting and then adjust the levels a little bit as well. As you can see, here's before, not so great. Mess with the hue and saturation and levels. We kind of match it to the uh, CG a little bit better. So after doing this rotoscoping, I wanted to add a shadow below our actor here. So I go ahead and uh, added a black solid and then feathered it a little bit and then added a blur, as you can see up here. So yeah, there's our shadow here. Um, just to kind of blend her into the environment a little better. I actually rendered the flying craft here on a second layer, so I went ahead and added added that in. I did want to add a light to the front of the ship, like it's searching for our actor here. So what I did is I made a blue solid, added a glow to it, and then tracked it onto the spaceship here. Then I took a lens flare and tracked it onto the front of our ship as well to give it a little more realistic look. So then after adding the flare, I added one more adjustment layer that had some light rays on it to kind of give it a little more uh, glare in the shot. I then added some grain to give it a little more of a film look, added some curves, and then uh, I think I decreased the hue and saturation for the final shot. Anyways, that's it guys. Be sure to like this video if you thought it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. The JBH Media Facebook page is in the description below. If you want to like it there to get the latest updates, feel free to do so. If you want to learn more about uh, Blender, I've linked some uh, websites that have some good tutorials along with some uh, books in the uh, description below as well. Um, so feel free to check those out. And uh, yeah, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think.